Hi everyone, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely John where we read better, not more. I am back today to do a new series. I don't know how many videos there will be in this series, but I'm going to do little mini videos on literary terms, what they mean, and sort of give brief definitions and examples of them. Today we're going to talk about irony, which will probably be a little bit longer than the typical video in this series, but it's a great one to kick us off. In Greek comedy, there was a character that was given the sort of category of Iron, E-I-R-O-N. And this character was often pretended to be less intelligent than they were and made jokes and understatements and that sort of thing. And by the end of the comic play, they would have overcome the Alazon, who is this sort of braggart, who is not as cool as they think they are, not as smart or as capable as they think they are. And if you're kind of thinking of Bugs Bunny and maybe Yosemite Sam or any of the other sort of typical uh, opponents to Bugs Bunny, that's really the classic trope that we're talking about here. And the term iron is exactly the root that we have for our word irony. Now there's a bunch of different types of irony and subcategories, and we'll probably cover those each in their own right over time. But for today, I want to talk about two of the most common and most recognizable forms of irony. The first one is verbal irony, and that's when the words that are coming out of someone's mouth are have a literal meaning that is either opposite or quite a bit different to what the intended meaning of the speaker is. I am actually working from a book called A Glossary of Literary Terms. I'll have it linked down below. It's a really great resource. I've talked about it before. I think English students should have this book or a book similar to it on their shelves as a reference work. And this book actually gives the example of a, from The Rape of the Lock, a poem by Alexander Pope. In this section, there is a character who sort of like stammers out his answer to something. And in reply, another character says, it grieves me much that who speaks so well should speak in vain. So the idea being here being that he does not speak well and um, it probably does not grieve the speaker. Uh, Jane Austen is also a master of verbal irony. Her famous opening line of Pride and Prejudice, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife is a great, it's a great example of irony. It is probably not a truth universally acknowledged it's probably pretty buttoned up, even though many people may think that or may be aspiring to capture a young man. It's not something that they're going to say aloud. And obviously he, he himself is not seek, thinking such a thing. I have a fortune. I must be in want of a wife. In addition to verbal irony, we're also going to talk about dramatic irony today. And this can happen in plays or in stories, in movies, in any kind of storytelling medium. And it's when you as the audience member have more information about what's going on than a character in the play or in the story. A lot of times the narrator or the author themselves has given away some of this information maybe in another scene where the character wasn't present and you know that some they're walking into some nefarious plot and the murderer is just around the corner. It really serves to heighten your, your anxiety and your expectations. This can lead characters to react inappropriately both in comedic situations or in tragic situations. So here I'm thinking of the famous comic scene at the beginning of The Fiddler on the Roof where Tevya is speaking to the butcher and he thinks the butcher is asking for his cow when in fact he is asking for one of his daughter's hands in marriage. And so the way that they're talking about their respective subjects becomes quite humorous because Tevye is like, why are you talking about my cow this way, right? And then the butcher is thinking like, why are you referring to your daughters in this way? And so that can be an example of a humorous situation of verbal irony where we, I'm sorry, of dramatic irony, where we as the audience know there's a miscommunication happening here, but the characters do not. So that is it for my mini video today on irony. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Verbal irony, dramatic irony, if you're looking for more examples, let me know. Until next time, my name is Alexandra and I'm still a bibliophile. <laughs>